What's up guys, Eddie Martinez here with The Recording Connection and welcome to your supplemental video for lesson number 16, Electronic Music Production and Beat Matching. Let's go ahead and fire up Pro Tools and get started. Alright guys, so either you guys have your Pro Tools fired up, if not, uh, don't worry about it. All you need to do is just watch what I'm doing over here, uh, kind of follow along. Essentially what we're going to be doing today is we're going to learn how to use Beat Detective. It's very, very handy. Essentially what Beat Detective does is it allows you to go ahead and get a less than perfect recording slightly at a time and uh, bring it so that it is right on time sounds perfect with the rest of the mix a lot of times this is very helpful with uh, you know drums so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and make sure we align this kick drum so let's first go ahead and hear how this kick drum sounds So as you can hear, it wasn't playing exactly to the metronome, it was actually deviating, it's, you know, maybe a few of them were actually right on beat, maybe uh, some of them were playing uh, slightly afterwards, and this is actually what happens with live drummers, and actually any live, you know, musician, uh, essentially we're not robots, uh, we're not machines, we're not going to play everything exactly to the tempo, we're going to deviate just a little bit, but the beat detective knows this, and it actually compensates for that, and it'll adjust your, um, plane so that it fits right on the grid. So let's go ahead and uh, bring up our Beat Detective. You could either do a Command 8 or you could just go to the Event window or Menu and bring it up that way. Okay, what we're really going to be going over today are these three last functions on the bottom, uh, Clip Separation, Clip Conform, and Edit Smoothing. Okay, now which, what the Clip Separation does, it will first actually detect, actually not first, but It'll eventually, at the end, it'll detect where all your beginnings of each transient or each sound is, and it just identify it. Say, oh, okay, like I could tell this is where the measure actually begins or um, the beat actually begins, and this is where your sound is. I'm going to go ahead and at least highlight that the beginning of your transient is right there. Okay, that's what it does. It doesn't move. It doesn't really do too much, but it's the first step that you need to do is uh, identify each of the transients so that you can move them later. Okay, so first what we need to do is select a, you know, a region to go ahead and uh, detect all the transients. So we're going to go ahead and select this region right here, this, uh, this drum track right here. So I'm selecting all of it. So as I'm moving my mouse along, I can see that Beat Detective has now identified all my transients and detected them, but you're probably going to have to analyze it. Uh, so you, we're going to get to that in just a second, but that's why you see all these purple lines. Okay, it's a, it, Essentially what it did is it already automatically detected the beginning of each of these transients. Okay, cool. So next, uh, what we need to do is uh, select you know, what type of notes does this region have? Are they quarter notes? Are they eighth notes, sixteenth notes, thirty-second notes? Um, I know that they have eighth notes in it, so I'm going to go ahead and select eighth notes. Okay. Then I'm going to capture the selection. Now next what I'm going to go ahead and do is decide what type of detection we're going to do here. Now it has a collection or normal. Collection would be if you had a multiple uh, regions selected. Uh, for right now, we're just doing one region, so we'll just leave it on normal. The analysis will be exactly how um, it's going to detect it. Is it going to be high emphasis? If it's going to be low emphasis, enhanced resolution. You know, it's basically saying uh, how much power to use to detect each of these transients. So we're going to go ahead and just leave it on high emphasis. So it's going to basically detect the highest part of the transient, okay? And it's usually the onset, beginning of that sound. It's usually the highest. It's like it's an impact thing. Usually it's going to be for, for drums. It'll be at the very beginning. And then I'm going to hit Analyze. Then once you do hit Analyze, it's going to go ahead and make an assessment of all these transients, and then you'll see this purple line appear. Okay, now right below that you have the sensitivity, so how sensitive is it going to actually, you know, be able to recognize 
these transients. Okay, you go to zero, it's not there. I think once you move it a little bit to like maybe 4% or actually maybe even just 2%, you'll see a, a difference. You'll see where it's actually picking up these, these new transients. So we're just going to leave it at 100% because we want all of them to move for sure. Now the resolution will decide exactly which transient is it going to be picking up. Uh, so you could do bars, that means it's going to pr pretty much pick up every fourth one, the beginning of every bar. Beats, which will pick up every single beat. Subbeats would pick up, if there was more transients in between, it would pick up those as well. And since there aren't, it doesn't. So we'll just leave it on beats. And then we'll go to the next step, which is separating it. Okay, so all it's going to do is make cuts. So now it's separated our one large region into smaller regions, okay? Now, if you wanted to, you could always just move these manually and, and move them to grid the same way that you would do that with if you weren't using Beach Detective. Because all this you could actually do manually, but it takes a lot more time, okay? We already separated. Now the next thing we want to do is go to Clip Conform, which is going to say, okay, I'm going to move all these clips now to exactly where they need to be, okay? So the selection stays the same. The only thing that needs to change is how it's going to go ahead and conform this. Okay? We're not we're not going to do a groove. We're just going to keep it standard. Now what the strength is is basically like MIDI. This is like the quantization of it. How close to the beginning of the beat is this going to actually be? Okay? If you want it to sound a little bit more human, you move it. You know, you move this bar or fader accordingly to that. I want to go ahead and keep it right on the grid, almost robotic and we'll leave it right there. Now exclude within, um, this is another option that gives you to uh, give you flexibility, humanize it a little bit more. Okay, we're gonna leave it at zero. Swing will do the same. Uh, swing will essentially keep it quantized but within, a, within specific parameters. Okay, you could either have it as an eighth note or a sixteenth note. Okay, we're actually not gonna change the swing of this at all. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that ticked off. Now we're going to go ahead and conform. Now everything is, you saw what happened there, everything just moved over to the left or right a little bit and now everything is right on the grid which is what we want. But what happens is, if you can see right here, you'll see that there's a little bit of a, a slight gap uh, in between both of these regions. Which is when, when this happens, essentially when the playhead goes over it, you might hear a popping sound before you get to the kick, or right at the kick, you'll hear this popping sound, which we don't want. That's why you, the next step is actually to get to edit smoothing. Okay, so we went ahead and conformed it. Let's go ahead and hear how it sounds right now, just to kind of get a little preview of that. So as you can tell, now it, uh, especially from the beginning, it was very, it was off. It was very much off, um, off, off tempo. Okay, but now that we've, we went ahead and uh, did, you know, the clip separation and we've done our clip conform, now it's right on the beat, which is what we want. Okay, the very next thing to do is something called edit smoothing, and that's to go ahead and fix all these little gaps. Okay, so we don't get clicks or popping sounds. Uh, that's unwanted sounds that we don't want in our track. So we want to go ahead and make sure everything sounds nice and smooth. So these two will actually stay the same except that you would go from clip conform to cl uh, edit smoothing and then from there you would just decide what type of uh, smoothing you like. So either you could just fill the gaps and I can hit smooth or I can go ahead and fill the gap and crossfade it so that it actually, before it actually begins at sounds, it's slightly crossfaded so it comes in a little bit more naturally, which I'm going to go ahead and do. Okay? So let's go ahead and hear it now. You might not hear too much of a difference, but when you do this over time on a long, uh, you know, region and there's a lot of uh, different uh, tracks going on, you will probably notice a difference more. Let's go ahead and hit play. And that's it. That's how you use Beat Detective in Pro Tools. All right, guys, that's all the lesson detail I have for you for right now. But of course, there's plenty more videos coming along in the future, so look out for those. And remember to always try to find more information about your lessons online. 
And while you're online, don't forget to check out Music Is My Oxygen for all the things that you care about in the world of music. And until next time, have fun, study hard, and keep your eyes on your goals. I'll catch you guys on the next video.